I don't even know if I'm going to end up sharing this. But... Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know I've been gone for a little bit, but I'm back and I just want to say hello and that I missed you guys. So today's video is not scripted. I didn't even write an outline or anything. It's just going to be kind of me talking to you guys, telling you guys about my life, a little, just a small update, um, specifically an update about after the show, the show Marrying Million Season 2 that I was on. I just get a lot of messages, people asking me how I've been doing, what I'm doing, and if I talk to Kevin, all that stuff. So um, what better way to come back than a lovely video <laughs> about that subject. So as you guys can see by the title, I decided to leave Vegas. If you've seen the show, you know that I originally moved from San Diego to Vegas to move there with Kevin because... I was naive and, you know, I wanted to move to Vegas. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so pretty much right after I moved there, that's when we broke up and he went to Miami because he decided he didn't like Vegas and Miami is another no income tax state. So, um, he went there and there I was still in Vegas. So I decided to stay. And if you guys saw the apartment I was in, it was kind of like dingy and just small and not anything special. And, you know, I figured this is perfect for a thousand dollar budget as well as I'm going to be at Kevin's 95% of the time. Didn't work out like that. I stayed in that apartment for like six more months or I think it was like eight more months by myself. Then quarantine happened was not happy so I came home to Bakersfield to spend some time with my family and it was a good time and then I decided you know what I'm gonna go back to bottle service do it for one more year before I fully go online with my online business and so I was like I'm gonna get uh, a new apartment in Vegas and I got this really nice two-bedroom place all new appliances I um, had my own office slash it was Bun's room and then my own room. There's like a stand-up shower and like light mirrors that um, had light mirrors that had lights in them. I don't know. It was just a really nice place. And I don't have a lot of videos, but I'll try to add something, any video that I have of it, uh, any video that I have of it. And then I randomly got Stella, my pup. She's sitting right there. I was on the third floor, so she did not like it. I originally was gonna get two cats, honestly, but I last second was like, you know, I should just get a dog. The main thing I wanted was an animal that was cuddly, and Stella is cuddly, that is for sure. So anyway, she didn't like the, the third floor apartment, and last second I decided that I wasn't gonna go back to bottle service, and bottle service, is great because you know it's quick money it's a lot of money you work three to four days a week and you make anywhere from three thousand to ten thousand dollars like it's ridiculous money but it's kind of you know up and down depending on the season but I decided not to do it and I decided to burn the boats which is a quote that Tony Robbins says about um, burning the boats so you don't have a second thing to go to. You don't have a safety net. So I was just like, you know, I'm gonna go all in. <laughs> and so I joined a business program, Business by Design by James Woodmore, which I absolutely love and highly recommend. And I, so I started taking his program and I was just in Vegas and I just found myself feeling complacent. I knew I wanted to go all in on my business, but I just didn't like Vegas. It was hot. My place was nice, but honestly, like, I didn't have friends. I had literally had, like, two friends, and I'm just someone who likes to be near the beach, and I just really felt like I needed to leave. I just, I just felt like I didn't want to be there, and I honestly kind of got in a small, short relationship as well. I hope he doesn't watch this. He probably won't. 
but um, he was great. Honestly, he was so good. He was nice, just giving, just such a, a really good person, and we got along really well, but I just felt like my heart wasn't fully ready to be opened yet. I felt like I wanted to work on me more and become my best self in order to attract the best. And it's not that he wasn't great because he was honestly really good, very good looking, super fit. But I just, I wasn't in a place in my life where, you know, I felt like I wanted to get in a relationship and kind of like settle down and accept commitment. But um, I feel like maybe I have some commitment issues too, but I just, I wasn't ready. I feel, I. I'm on this journey right now where I'm so heavily devoted to bettering myself in every aspect of my life. My, phys my physical appearance, my mental, my mentality, um, my finances, my emotional health, everything. I'm just like trying to become my best self. And I know for a fact that in order to let in, you have to let go because if you have a cup of water, and it's filled all the way to the top and you want new things in your life, in order to get something new, you're gonna have to let some things go. So I decided, you know, I'm not stuck here. I could break the lace. I mean, it was kind of expensive to break, but I wasn't happy, honestly. I felt complacent, like it just wasn't myself. I just felt like I wasn't in touch with my soul, if that makes sense. So I was kind of on the fence with moving. And then my dad had a mini heart attack. And honestly, that was kind of like, okay, that's it. Like, I need to go. Like, there's nothing here for me. It's hot. There's no beach. <laughs> and I have no friends here. Like, it's just, there's nothing here. Like, I need to be, you know, with my dad, with my family, closer to my friends. So I decided to come home. So I'm here currently in Bakersfield. This is... A spare room that I created into my office. Um, I actually painted this wall. It was so bad before. I painted this wall which I'm very proud of because I did not know how much work painting is. I painted that bookshelf. I painted the borders. I painted the fan. I painted everything. I painted that mirror. Um, it was just I just wanted a place to kind of be my office and then I have another room. Um, my dad's doing a lot better. He's actually losing a lot of weight because he's eating better, and I feel like it was just kind of a wake-up call for him to eat better and just have better habits, eating habits and um, exercise habits. And honestly, I, I feel good. I feel like I'm coming back to myself. This time I've been spending with myself has been really good. I've been diving deep into my program, Business by Design, where I'm creating a program um, that is going to be so beneficial and help so many women transform their lives from the inside out and pretty much go through exactly what I went through, just going from being insecure and just not confident and, you know, just perceiving my life in lack and not seeing all of the opportunities around me to rewiring my subconscious mind and becoming someone who's confident and capable and just perceiving everything with abundance. <laughs> um, it's, just, it's just such a good feeling when you begin to raise your vibration and you re rewire your mind for success. You start to see things that you're like, whoa, was that there the whole time? And um, I'm kind of talking a little low because um, it's actually a little late. But I told myself that I was going to record today. So I was like, I need to do it no matter what, how, no matter how late it is because I made the commitment to record this. So I was like, it's happening. Um, but yeah, so I'm pretty much here in Bakersfield. And I'm currently looking at places in Huntington as well as Ventura just somewhere near the beach that is not too far from my family. Um, but I also want somewhere that I could stay for more than six months, more than one year, because I've literally moved so much in the past five years. Literally every single year I've moved somewhere the past five years. Every 12 to even six months, like 
I went from San Diego, a few places there when I was in college, and then I went to Vegas, a couple places there, and it's just, it's tiring. I want, I want somewhere where I could call it home. So that's what I'm currently manifesting is a place that I can call home for longer than a year, <laughs> somewhere near the beach and somewhere that's, you know, two, maybe two and a half at max hours away from my family. Um, I'm also manifesting my, I'm, I'm actually manifesting all the time. We all are manifesting all the time. But, um, you know, I'm just making clear intentions and taking aligned action toward my goals, which is basically that's what manifesting is. But um, this isn't a manifesting video. This is just kind of a life update video. Um, but yeah, so basically I moved from Vegas and I'm here. <laughs> Again, I, I didn't outline this video anything. I was just like, it's late, but I need to finish this video. Um, as for Kevin... Um, I do not talk to him at all. I mean, honestly, I feel like if he would have stayed in Vegas, like, we would have... Okay, actually, I'm not going to lie to you guys. <laughs> in my head, I felt like I was going to lie to you guys. I was going to tell you guys that we never talked, and that's a lie. Because we did. We talked a little bit and I'm only sharing this because we're about 10 to 12 minutes in. Depends on what I edit in or out. And I mean, if you guys are watching this far in, then you'll hear about it. Because literally, I haven't told anyone about this. I mean, I've told one friend, my friend Colton, because he actually helped me during that time. Um, a lot. He really helped me get through this because I didn't tell anyone that I did this except for him and my friend Diana. But I figure I want to be more open with you guys and I want to be able to tell you guys things and honestly not everyone watches these entire videos so if you're watching this then you get to know the dirt because I literally I haven't even told Natalie this and that's my best friend so it's kind of crazy. I mean I guess it's not that big of a deal but so in January, this was right after my lease ended, I decided to come home to Bakersfield because, you know, it was quarantine and um, my lease ended and I was just like in between places because I wasn't sure if I wanted to stay in Vegas, whatever. So I came home and we were actually messaging each other on Instagram. Um... Oh, no, texting. I don't know why I said Instagram. We were texting each other. Well, first, it happened on Instagram. And honestly, I'm the one who reached out to him. Um, which, obviously, is not good. But, you know, it's really hard to get over someone. Especially your first relationship that you've been with for two years. So, anyways, um, I decided to make a trip to Miami. I know. So I made a trip to Miami, and honestly, it was the worst decision I've ever made in my life. <laughs> like, it was horrible. I felt like before I went, I was almost healed. Like, I was killing it. I was doing so good. And if you guys know me or watch any of my content, you know that I always preach that whatever you vibrate at or whatever, you know, whatever you, wherever your vibration is, that's where you resonate, and that's what you're going to attract into your life. So I was feeling good. And so I decided to go to Miami. We decided to see each other, see if there was anything there still. And so I went there. And it honestly, it wasn't great at all. Like, we literally, like, being honest, we didn't hook up at all, which is kind of weird to share on the internet, but, like, whatever. Um, anyways, we did not... Nothing happened. Literally, I went there for two days. It was such a waste of my life, of my time. I went there, did not have a great time. We literally, like, it was weird because he, he, I don't even know if I'm going to end up sharing this, but 
I specifically told him I don't want to go if he's talking to anyone else. And he said he wasn't. And they were actually on a yacht the day I was leaving. And I was going to fly earlier because I was like, oh, I want to go on the yacht with you guys. But he was like being weird about it. I was like, okay, never mind. I'll just, you know, not go. And so I came in that night and showed up the very early the next morning. And first upon arriving, like it wasn't a welcome anything. First when I got there, actually his roommate, David, his business partner, whatever, he had to go to the hospital because he was having some, um, his arm was numb or whatever. Anyways, it was just weird. It was weird, honestly. We didn't have a good time. We were doing work. I was on my laptop. He was on his laptop. Like, I was like, Katie, are you stupid? Again? Really? Whew. Anyway, so it was not a good time. I get there. So I get there. You know how us girls are. We're little investigators. Well, first of all, he didn't even try to hide anything. Because I get there. And I get there and I see a toothbrush on the guest counter. Like he had two sinks in his master bathroom. And I see a toothbrush on one side. I'm like, really? I look at it. The toothbrush is wet. Are you kidding me? I was so upset. I was just like, are you kidding me? I specifically did not want to come and be the other girl or whatever. Like, I don't know the extent. And honestly, just it really pissed me off. And then I look in his closet. Because you know us girls, we're like little investigators. And there are heels and a jacket. Heels and a jacket. And I was just like, okay. So I do a little Instagram investigation. And I figure out who it is. And immediately, I feel like crap. I'm like, ugh, like... You know, I feel really unworthy. I just feel like shit. And it just wasn't a good time. So then I confronted him about it that night when we went out. And it was just a disaster. I ended up drinking and drinking too much. Being a little dramatic. But at the same time, I was pissed because I literally flew across the country. And then I literally left. And before I left, I poured water in his shoes, <laughs> which is so stupid and so petty, but I was really pissed and I was pretty much drunk. So I basically called an Uber, went to the airport and was like 10 hours early before my flight. And it was just a horrible experience. And I was literally bawling on the way home the entire time. Like it was horrible. And yeah, so then I felt really shitty and just horrible time came home feeling really stupid but I think I learned my lesson this time never again so you know fool me once shame on you fool me twice wait how does it go fool me once shame on you fool me second time you ain't gonna fool me again I forgot actually I, I killed that okay Anyways, so yeah, that happened. But other than that, we have not talked to each other. I low-key messaged her and told her how not good of a guy he is, you know, when he's with someone, which, yeah, honestly, I was just being dramatic and immature now that I look back at it. But, um, yeah, we don't talk anymore. So, yeah, basically... I guess. I mean, I don't know if that's a big deal to share that, but I literally told no one. I mean, I would tell Natalie now since it's September and this happened in January, <laughs> but around the time, I just didn't tell anyone. I was like, nope, this is going to go with me to the grave because I was so embarrassed. I felt so stupid, but honestly, I learned a lot from it. I learned that, you know, people can change but they most mostly don't. People mostly aren't going to change in life. You're only going to change if you truly want to change. And I thought that, you know, maybe he could have changed because I knew that I changed a lot. 
a lot. <laughs> but I also hired a subconscious transformational coach to help me reprogram my mind to be more optimistic and to ingrain certain values um, that I prioritize, like being disciplined, having self-integrity, and being committed to my success. Um, but yeah, so he didn't do the inner work, so of course he didn't change. So yeah, horrible experience, never again. But other than that, we don't talk to each other. <laughs> Promise, no lies. I'm a bad liar. I don't know if you guys could tell, but I can't lie. Like, I tried to lie to you guys, and I was like, in my head I heard, just tell them. And I was like, fuck, okay, I'll tell you guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that happened. Um, but I learned my lesson, never again. So yeah, now I'm home and I'm feeling good again. I'm feeling high vibe again. I'm working on myself and I'm working on creating my program, Abundant Boss Babe Academy, where I help other, other women create confidence in themselves, build their self-love, and I help them reprogram their mind for success and for values like being responsible for their life, being committed to their success, and just basically transforming their life. Because in order to transform your external reality, you have to first transform your internal reality. And I know that firsthand because I was there. I hired the coach, then I took a program where I became certified in neurolinguistic programming and hypnotherapy, so it's honestly something that if you just feel like you're kind of stuck in a rut, you feel like you're a negative Nancy and that, you know, you just feel like a victim in life, like life is happening to you, not for you, then this program is going to be for you. As well as I wanted to tell you guys about a free series that I'm holding called Abundantly You 2.0. It's going to be a three-part training series that I'm holding September 16th, 21st, and 23rd, all at 4 p.m. PST. If you're watching this past then, then maybe you could watch the replays, but they are going to expire September 30th because they're going to be very valuable and they're going to be showing you the exact process that you need to take in order to reprogram your mind from lack, from negativity, from fear of being judged, fear of putting yourself out there, to someone who's confident and happy and committed to creating the life and manifesting the life that they want. So, um, Check those out if you're able to. If not, then there will be a link below with something for you to check out. So, I don't know. Check it out. See what's there for you guys. Um, but yeah, this video was very just kind of raw. I literally didn't outline, outline it or anything. As you could tell, I'm stuttering all over the place. And I randomly ended up spilling the beans that I... <laughs> made a huge mistake and, um, you know, thought that my ex changed because I just really missed him and, you know, I felt like we had something really special together but I now realize that it was a karmic bond. It was a trauma bond so it's, it was basically me replaying old scenarios from my childhood. Um, if you guys would like to know kind of personal but um, my dad is so amazing he's so loving and generous and he did the best he could raising us as well as my mom but he wasn't physically affectionate so or, or verbally like he wasn't like he didn't hug us or tell us that he loved us but he showed us love in different ways, like getting us gifts and taking us to Six Flags and camping and out to eat and to the movies. Like his, you know how there's multiple ways to show your love language. I, at the time, didn't know about this, but you know, your love language could be physical effect, um, words of affirmation, physical touch, or it could be gifts, receiving gifts, or it could be acts of service. Um, 
and I think there might be one more. Oh, quality time together. But anyways, so I didn't know that, and so he wasn't physically or verbally affectionate. And so I was trying to find a guy in my life who was also emotionally unavailable and not physically, well, he was actually physically very affectionate, but who wasn't emotional, who wasn't emotionally attached and who wasn't verbally affectionate and try to replay that scenario and then try to fix him in order to kind of close that trauma loop that I was replaying from my childhood, if that makes sense. So I became aware of that, um, you know, through increase, increasing my awareness and increasing my vibration because when you increase your vibration, your awareness inherently increases. And um, yeah, I became aware of that. And I actually was aware of that before I went back to Miami. But you know, um, things happen. People make mistakes and all you can do is learn from them. And yeah, I learned a lot from them. <laughs> but so I think that's all I have for you guys I just wanted to share with you guys why I moved from Vegas and what my plans are for the near future and some of the mistakes I made not too long ago um, but yeah so make sure you guys check out the link below and if you guys like this video and you liked me just being raw and sharing some juicy details, personal details with you guys, then please give me a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell if you want to be notified every single time I release a new video. So thank you guys so much for listening. If you listen to this entire video, I appreciate you a lot. And I'll see you guys on my next one. Bye. Wait, say bye to Stella. It's a mess in here, honestly. <laughs> Hi, Stella. It's honestly a mess in here because Stella eats everything and my makeup's everywhere, but all you guys can see is this, so it doesn't look messy. Okay, <laughs> bye guys.